to my channel. I keep looking at myself in the viewfinder and I'm like, who is that? It me. Today, we are bringing back character tutorials. It has been a hot minute since I've done one of these. This was a series on my channel where I did tutorials slash stage makeup looks slash cosplay slash whatever you wanna call this about different musical theater characters. And while I do the tutorial and while I put on the makeup, I deep dive into the show, into that character, all the good stuff. Today's tutorial is on Princess Fiona from Shrek the Musical. This is a role that I played when I was 17. Also, huge thank you to Trendy Wigs for sending me this wig. I am obsessed with it. This isn't sponsored, but you can use code CAF30 to get 30% off. I am obsessed with this wig. It was less expensive than a lot of the wigs that I've worn and a lot nicer. Question of the day, what do you think about Shrek the Musical? Do you love it? Do you hate it? What do you think about the symbolism? Do you think there's a deeper meaning in it? Or do you think it's just a musical about burping and farting that's meant to appeal to the masses of someone who wouldn't normally see a musical, but they're like, hey, I know that movie, I'll go see it. Let me know in the comments down below. Also, if you're new here, hi, my name's Kat Steele, and I really like musicals, so much so that I accidentally created a musical theater internet cult. That's what you're watching right now. It's the musical theater internet cult. So if you wanna join the cult, hit subscribe. We'd love to have you in the cult. Let's jump on into this tutorial on Princess Fiona and some analysis on Shrek the Musical. Hey friends, my face is naked, so it's time to start the makeup tutorial. First off, we're going to prime our eyes using Urban Decay's Primer Potion in the shade Fix. And we're going to set our primer with Foxy from the Urban Decay Naked 2 palette. Now, this is just what I'm going to be using for my tutorial. If you choose to recreate this look or any other stage makeup look you do, don't feel the need to use exactly the same products that I do. This is just what I have on hand, so use whatever you got in your little hands. So I'm just going to apply that with a flat brush. That's actually the brush that came with the Naked 2 palette and I'm just going to really pack that all over the eyes, especially focusing on the brow bone. That's gonna help retain a lot of lightness in the area, especially when we start going in there with color. Speaking of color, for this tutorial, I'm going to be using mainly a knockoff MAC palette that I got ages ago. I don't wear this for day-to-day -day makeup. I really just keep this for tutorials and sometimes stage makeup. So to start up this gradient on my eyes, I'm going to be using four different matte green eyeshadows. And when I say matte, I mean non-sparkly. And this is going to be really important when it comes to creating depth in this eye look. And frankly, I don't know why I'm shaking my head no, but I am going to use a piece of paper to help line up the shape of this eyeshadow. Basically, it's going to serve as a stencil. You can also do this trick with a piece of tape. Just be sure to be really careful around the sensitive skin around your eyes. And I'm going in with that first lightest shade on a big fluffy brush, and I'm sweeping that all over the crease and kind of creating a wing out toward the end of my eyebrow. The green wasn't quite as pigmented as I wanted, so I actually ended up going in with a clean finger and kind of patting that color on. That can really help when it comes to making a color feel a little more saturated. Also, because this video is going to contain some deep dive analysis on Princess Fiona and Shrek the Musical, now would be a good time to say spoiler alert for Shrek the Musical. I feel like that's kind of obvious when it comes to like these deep divey analytical videos. So when I was designing this makeup look for Princess Fiona, I decided I wanted to make it a little more extra, a little more glam, a little more fun, as you could see in my little intro section and the thumbnail, it's out there, you know? It is a sparkly green smoky eye, it is a red lip, and I did that for a number of reasons. Number one, I like looking glam sometimes. It's fun. But seriously, reason number two and the bigger reason I decided to do this makeup look for this character is that I wanted it to reflect how Fiona feels and the way that she might do her makeup. Which you might think is a little crazy and I thought it was a little crazy too. Most of the time when I do kind of princessy or ingenue makeup, it is very natural. It's a natural glam, it's a doe eye, very pink lip, pink cheek sort of deal. But I wanted this makeup to mean more to Fiona. Makeup can be used in a number of ways. It can be self-expression, it can be to enhance your natural beauty, or in some cases, it can be to hide yourself, to create a mask. And I think for my interpretation of Fiona and what we're doing today, that's what she's doing. Fiona is a princess. She is born into a role that she has to play, and it's one that she's been kidding herself her entire life. She knows that she is not the Disney princess that everyone wants her to be, and she is trying so desperately not to let that facade crack. One of my favorite moments in the show that really points this out is the opening of Act 2, which is called Morning Person. Fiona gets her own solo Disney princess good morning song, and instead of being dressed by bird, she summons a swarm of rats, kills the bird, and is jacked up on coffee. She also has an epic fart battle and a 
whole bunch of other things that Disney princesses would never do, but arguably the biggest thing that separates her from other princesses is the curse that she is placed under. If you guys don't remember Shrek or Shrek the Musical, at every sunset, Fiona herself turns into an ogre, and this curse will only be broken by true love's kiss. So in typical princess fashion, Fiona is betrothed to a man she has never met and assumes that when they meet, it will be love at first sight and that kiss will break the spell and he'll never even have to see her turn into an ogre. The fact that Fiona is cursed to become an ogre is a huge secret and something that she's deeply ashamed of and disgusted by. She hates herself. She thinks that because of this curse, there is no way that anyone would ever fall in love with her. I think this is one of the most brilliant metaphors in modern musical theater. At the end of the day, Shrek is a family show, you know, there's going to be tons of families in the audience, tons of kids. They are seeing a princess who has a manifestation of a secret that turns her into this ugly, unlovable monster. Every single person has their ogre that they hide away, that thing that they think makes them unlovable, unlikable, not someone you want to be friends with, not someone you want to work with. It might be anxiety, it might be depression, it might be low self-esteem, or the feeling that you're too extra, or too much, or too quirky. But whatever that deep, dark secret that you feel like you have to hide away to be worthy of love. This show proves that every single person has that, even seemingly perfect princesses. Let's break the tension by taking that darkest matte green eyeshadow and working that into the outer third of your crease in kind of a diagonal V shape, if that makes sense, going up toward that wing in your eyebrow and then through the crease and also really focusing right over there in the outer corner of the eye. Shrek is really a story about vulnerability and intimacy. One of my favorite moments in Shrek is the fact that Shrek doesn't, you know, get that first kiss with Fiona. They don't get that proclamation of love until Shrek sees Fiona in her true form. He sees her secret and still loves her. And it's not just the fact that he's an ogre too, it's that he knows who she is and loves her. Backtracking to earlier in Act 2, Shrek has a great song called When Words Fail, and he's kind of hyping himself up to tell Fiona that he likes her. And that is a huge scary moment for Shrek, letting someone in. He's someone who hides his feelings with sarcasm, with a gruff exterior, with a literal wall. He can't hide who he is. He's an ogre 24-7, and because of that, he's resigned himself to a life where he doesn't think he's worthy of love or friendship, and over the course of the show, he gains both. Emotionally, Shrek just kind of shuts down because of his flaws. Fiona tries to hide her flaws, and Lord Farquaad refuses to acknowledge his flaws exist, even though he also has a physical manifestation about his inadequacies. I love the message in this show, and the fact that it's in such a deceiving shell, you know? It's a show that gets done by a bunch of summer camps, it's most famous for having a fart battle, and yet it's a beautiful show about emotional intimacy and self-esteem, which is another big point that I want to talk about specifically when it comes to Fiona. One last bit, I love that there's an emotional intimacy point that isn't just between romantic partners, and that's really where all of the other fairy tale creatures come in, led by Pinocchio. You have to be open and honest with your friends, even when you're not the most sparkly, most fun version to be around. You want to find a tribe who loves you for you, and really allow you to let your freak flag fly. And I kind of feel like I found that through the internet, through you guys, my subscribers, the Theater Thursday fam. You know, we usually hang out more than once a week, whether it be here or on my vlog channel, we get together and we geek out about musical theater, theater, Broadway, the performing arts, the stuff that we love. And oftentimes it's something that we've been bullied about or something that we've been told we need to tone down or hide to make us a little bit easier or a little more palatable. Theater kids have a reputation for being extra, for being loud, for being passionate, for maybe being a little dramatic. And in a way, they're right, we need to do it in the appropriate setting, but we can't lose the thing that makes us special, the thing that makes us different, the thing that we love, what makes us special makes us strong. Musical theater and YouTube are definitely freak flags of mine, and boy am I proud to fly it with you. I am so honored and so grateful, and I love what I get to do here on the internet, and I am so happy that this is our little swamp of theater kids. Yes, we're a swamp and a cult. 
Don't worry about it. Also, I'm putting black eyeshadow in the outer V. I totally forgot I was doing a tutorial. I'm just deepening up the outer portion of that crease and kind of following up that wing with the black eyeshadow. This is going to help deepen the eye look and give it a lot more dimension. Especially when working with black eyeshadow, I find it easiest to go in with a very light hand and build up that coverage because it's easier to add color than it is to take away. We also want to avoid turning this smoky eye into a traditional black smoky eye. We still want to maintain a lot of that saturation, a lot of that green. We're just using the black to kind of create another shade. Next up, we're going to go in with Tokyo Tea by Morphe. It's a single pressed shadow and it is a gorgeous metallic electric green. I'm going to take this shade on a flat brush and I'm going to wet it down with some Glossier Soothing Face Mist. That's kind of their setting spray. So I'm going to wet that on up and press that onto the lid. By wetting that shade, it's really going to help foil it to really retain that sparkly metallic metallic texture, and it's also going to help enhance the actual shade of green. It's going to really make it pop. That was a good one. Going to line my eyes with a little tiny baby wing. I'm going to really make it small so you can see the eyeshadow, and I'm going to use Kat Von D's Tattoo Liquid Eyeliner. I'm also going to go ahead and clean up the eyeshadow shape and any fallout from the eyeshadow using Glossier's Liquid Eye Makeup Milky Remover. To prime my skin, I'm going to use another Glossier fave, the Priming Moisturizer. Side note, can we talk about my skin for a second? Because I'm really proud. I'm never someone who has ever had clear skin, but this is me. Let's, let's be TMI here PMSing. Like this is my new bad skin. I am so happy. So let me know if you guys want like a skincare routine on my second channel. I've been thinking about doing that. Also, if you didn't know, I have a discount code with Glossier. Glossier is one of my favorite makeup brands. They also make incredible skincare. I've been using the supers, which are their serums, religiously for the last couple months, and I think it's really, really improved like the glowiness of my skin. Anyway, if you want to shop Glossier, you want to pick up some boy brows, some Generation G lipstick, whatever you want to get, I have a discount code down below. It saves you money. This isn't sponsored, but it does directly support the geeky content that I make here on the internet, so please consider shopping through my link if you do want to get some Glossier and save some money. Next up, I'm going to take Maybelline Fit Me Foundation in shade 110 Porcelain. Now, this is the shade I use for most of the year. Right now, I do have some fake tan on, so I don't have a foundation in that color that I liked for this tutorial, especially with the red wig that I'm going to be doing. So, my face isn't going to match my body. Sorry, not sorry. I'm gonna buff that in using a flat top foundation brush from Kirkland. Yeah, like Costco. I got it in like middle school. I think about that a lot. Like I clean my brushes really, really well and pretty often so they last me a long time, but yeah, that brush is from Costco. Now, on a day-to-day -day basis, I usually do a lighter coverage foundation, but I love the Maybelline Fit Me because it's very buildable, it's readily available, like, at drugstores, and it's relatively cheap. I mean, granted, drugstore cosmetics have gone up in price, so it's almost kind of the same as going high-end, but when it comes to especially stage makeup that, you know, no one's going to be seeing you up close, granted, I'm actually filming this for YouTube, so everyone's gonna see it up close. Oops, I'm a clown. What? Is that what the kids are saying? It's a good foundation, especially for stage makeup, and this is what I usually wear for stage makeup. Gonna press that on in with a damp beauty blender. Now I'm taking the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer in shade 10, and I'm gonna press that in with the same damp beauty blender, setting that with some loose powder by Dermablend, a quick contour with my very well-loved Bahama Mama by The Balm, some Too Faced Beach Bunny Bronzer. So I'm just going to apply that where the sun would hit me, including my collarbones, because sun-kissed collarbones are the best baller bones. Okay, Kat. So let's talk about Princess Fiona and body acceptance. You thought I forgot we were talking about Shrek, didn't you? Well, I didn't. So a big part of Fiona's kind of underlying tones have to do with body acceptance, self-love, feeling like you need to look a certain way to be worthy of love, specifically, and in Fiona's case, romantic love. Real quick, I'm going to take the Too Faced Love Flush Blush in the shade How Deep Is Your Love? That whole thing was a tongue twister. So I don't know if this is something I've ever discussed on my channel, but I feel like a lot of the roles that I play hit me at an emotionally important time in my life. Like, I feel like I always learn something from the characters that I play, and I played Princess Fiona when I was 17, and I ended up doing Shrek in kind of a weird roundabout way, because when I decided that I was going to be doing a show with this production company, we were doing Carousel, and it looked like I was going to play Julie Jordan, which is one of my ultimate 
dream roles. If you don't know the show, she's kind of this tragically beautiful Rodgers and Hammerstein classic soprano right in my vocal sweet spot. She's a damsel in distress, very pretty, very sad. And I even told the director that I didn't mind missing prom since, you know, Carousel is one of my favorite shows. So at the last second, right before auditions, the show gets switched to Shrek the Musical. I'm no longer going to be playing this tragically beautiful, dignified damsel. I am going to be farting on stage and and missing the biggest night of my high school life. Taking Glossier's perfecting skin tint in the shade light because I'm going to attempt to match my body to my face. Fiona was not a dream role of mine. I am not a tap dancer. I can kind of belt and I can kind of mix, but again, my bread and butter, my career is singing high legit soprano stuff. Not only was I disappointed that I didn't get to play Julie, I was terrified because I didn't know if I could pull off playing Fiona. Not only that, but I took it as some weird personal attack in my little 17 year old brain where you think everyone's gossiping about you and you think that you're the ugliest thing on the face of the planet, I thought that I wasn't pretty enough to play Julie Jordan and now my punishment was like playing an ogre. Again, this was kind of before Shrek got super, super popular. This was like one of the first years that it was available to be licensed. In high school, I always had this reputation for playing the ingenue, for playing the princess, and granted that is a stereotype that has followed me into my adult life, and now I love it, but at the time it honestly caused me a lot of stress because I felt like I was a sham. I never dated in high school. I was not a girl that everyone had crushes on. My first kiss was on stage. In fact, my first few kisses were on stage. Like I'm talking my first five or six guys I kissed were all on stage. And I always thought it was because I wasn't pretty enough or funny enough or multi-talented enough or whatever dumb thing my 17 year old brain came up with. I always felt like I wasn't enough and I wasn't right and I always I always felt like I was trying to fit myself into a title that didn't fit me because I had to be a Disney princess. I had to be beautiful. I had to be perfect because that's what everyone had deemed me and I thought that's what I needed to make myself lovable. And that's just not real. No one is that. Disney princesses are animated. You cannot become an ideal of something that doesn't even exist. And that is what this show taught me. And it's still something that I struggle with today. And I still love being compared to a Disney princess. Like, that honestly makes my day one of my favorite compliments. But now it's not just because they're pretty, it's because they're compassionate and they're brave and they're creative and they stand up for what they believe in and they follow their dreams. And Princess Fiona is all of that and more. You know, she has ugly parts of herself that she feels like she needs to hide away and she takes a chance by letting someone in and also she farts on stage. It's very easy to feel like a princess when you have bomb eyeshadow and you're having a great hair day and a really cute outfit and it's way more difficult to feel like a princess when just everything is going wrong. Fiona taught me that even on your worst days you are still a princess. That being traditionally hot is not a prerequisite. Embrace your quirks. Go tap dance with rats. You might be a whole mess of contradictions, but you are still a princess, and what makes you special makes you strong. And I'm back! Ha 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 ha! This is my new hair. I am so obsessed with this wig. Trendy Wigs sent this over to me. This is Natasha. I didn't name my wig. That's the style of the wig, but also I'd name her Natasha. Next up, we're gonna take care of the eyebrows. I have naturally very dark eyebrows, so I'm going to fill it in with a light kind of reddish powder. There actually was a brief period of my life when I was a little bit ginger-y in high school, so I'm going to do what I did back then, which was taking the shade Buck from the original Naked palette, and I'm going to put that in my eyebrows as a brow powder. I am in the process of growing out my brows back to their original state, so trying to do my eyebrows can be a little messy and a little tricky right now, but I'm doing my best. Ooh, okay, this ended up being a really great color for this wig. I am so in love with this wig. I've got to do a tutorial with it really soon, just down so you guys can see how stunning this wig is. It is so thick and full and lace front. It's way nicer than most of the wigs that I've worn in shows and a lot less expensive. Trendy Wigs actually sent me a discount code for you guys. This isn't sponsored, but they sent me a discount code so you can use code CAF. 30 for 30% 30 off, which honestly I might use because I really like these wigs. While we're on a tangent about wigs, I love wearing wigs in shows. It is so nice to not have to heat damage my hair. It is so nice to not have to style my hair and just know that it's like 
ready to go and I can just pop it on and go. I'm going to set my eyebrows with this clear great lash mascara. This will just kind of help keep my brows in the direction that I want them to and kind of lock in that color. So if I was doing any other princess, I would probably just do a pink or a nude lip, but because I want to tie into Fiona's character development and how she feels about herself and makeup, I'm gonna go with a red lip. I'm going to take Russian Red by MAC, and I am going to overline just a little bit to give me a little bit more poutiness. Let's get this tiara on. Oh yeah, I'm living my best life. Is this the same tiara? This is the same tiara I wore when I played Fiona because I had another tiara, and that tiara broke during Into the Woods, which I was playing Cinderella at the same time I was playing Fiona. Also, as you can see, I am still wearing this black tank top because I own literally nothing green, so I'm gonna have to use the magic of Photoshop to help me. Let me know what you think about Princess Fiona, Shrek the Musical, everything about this in the comments down below. If you guys like this video or if you want more character tutorials in the future, give this video a big thumbs up. If you're new here, hit subscribe. I hope you guys are having a great day. I love you so, so much. Break a leg and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Bye.